In this unit, Unit 3, we're going to be taking a look at templates and themes and table of contents. I'm going to start the recordings with themes and how to customize styles because that kind of leads into templates because those themes and, temp and customized styles all become part of templates. And so I'm going to start with that and then go to the templates in some of the uh, later recordings. The document I'm going to be using is the Unit 3 sample. You should see that in your downloaded student files. In your recording support folder if you want to follow along. So I'm going to open that up. And it's just a document that I pulled from some past classes that uh, is for this Mako company. And just to get just a little bit of review, let's talk about themes. In the design tab, you can change the theme of the document. Most documents start off with the theme of micro with the Microsoft Office theme. So I'm going to switch this. My company logo down at the bottom there is kind of a bluish gray, so I'm going to use this depth um, theme for my document. Remember, whenever you change themes, it changes colors. It changes fonts. My theme, my fonts now are using the Corbel font. So the Corbel font is used for both the body and the titles. So if we go back to home here, we can see that Corbel is at the top for the body and it's also used for headings. And if I go back here, the themes also include color schemes. And so I'll be using the theme that goes along with this one. And all of that can be customized even more. I'm not going to go into that in this recording, but that can all be saved and changed and updated, etc. So now I'm in the themes. <clears throat> I'm going to open up the Styles pane. Whenever you're customizing styles in a document, it comes in real handy. These are the styles that are currently available to me. But this, excuse me, this opens up the Styles pane. The style pane, by default, shows you the styles that are being used in this document or that are readily available. And notice there are different kinds of styles. These are the font styles. And tell you what, I'm going to go to options here. And instead of just bringing in the ones that are in the current document, I'm going to bring in all the styles just so we can see them. All kinds of styles here. Some of them are paragraph styles. The normal style is applied to a paragraph. Other styles are have a little A next to them. Those are font styles. So those are only applied to certain kinds of fonts. And then there are linked styles that have a combination of fonts and paragraph styles. So line spacing and indentation, those kinds of things combined with fonts. So it's the differences in the different styles here. And when you create your own style, you want to think about which of those is most appropriate for your styles. I'm going to create our own, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. All right, to spruce this up a little bit, first thing I want to do is take my title and turn it into the title font. So we'll grab that. I want to take the quarterly sales report and turn that into a subtitle. And I want to take my first quarter and make that stand out a little bit more, so I'm going to use the intense quote. Okay, so it's centered. Now what I could do is decide that these now, we're very important styles. I think I want these centered as well, so I'm going to center them. I could, if I wanted to, change the style for title and say that the title from now on is centered. Whenever I use the title style in this document, styles are stored in a document. Right? When you create new styles, they're automatically stored in this document. So if you change the style here, it doesn't change any uh, existing documents that are already using the title style. It also doesn't change any future documents that use the title style. It's only for this document. Since I only have one title, I only have one subtitle, really doesn't make much sense to me to save those styles so that I can use them later in the document. Let's make this a little bigger so it stands out, maybe a 14. Okay. And now the beginning of my document, that didn't work. Let's select the text and try it again. 14, there we go. Okay, so now it's a little bit bigger and I've got kind of a layout, or kind of a style for my document. In order to make a lot of things work smoothly in Microsoft Word, it is a good idea when you have titles like my introduction here and my computer study and so on to use headings to designate those. 
Later on in the, in the recordings, we're going to talk about creating table of contents. Table of contents can only be automatically created if you use heading styles, or at least styles, maybe not heading styles, but styles. Okay. So I'm going to use those for my introduction paragraph, and then I'm going to control click my computer study, um, and Mac again, hang on. Let's try that again. I want to try to select these all at once. So I've got that one. Now I'm going to control click this heading. Don't worry about that. It should go away here pretty soon. <clears throat> and let's see if I can get three and four on here. There's three. I'm working on a Mac recording this in a Windows machine, so that's why the pop the menu keeps popping up a little bit. Don't worry about that. It shouldn't happen on yours. And finally, here's section five. So now I have all my sections highlighted. I can do them all at once. I could do them one at a time. Probably would have been easier instead of trying to figure out the Mac key for selecting those things. But I've got them all selected, so now I can convert them all to heading one. I can also choose heading one over here. Okay. And click that and say, you guys are all heading one, and now it's changed them all. Okay. And that's the heading one style. I also have some subheadings down here under regional updates. So my Midwestern... Control click on that one and oops, didn't want to do it. Control click and control click, and I want to make those heading twos. Right, so now I have heading. No, put it back again. Why did I do that? There they go. Heading two. So those are heading twos. They're a little bit smaller. This is a little darker, and so on. So now I have heading ones and heading twos throughout. And now I'm going to change this Midwestern region. I don't think this stands out enough. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to make it boldface. And while I'm looking at it, it's selected. And it's kind of light gray, and that makes it stand out. So I think what I'm also going to do is, first of all, unselect the paragraph marker. And then use the fill can to pick a kind of a light gray background for that so that it stands out. I could pick any of these other colors. It doesn't really matter which one I pick, so let's pick... I like something a little darker. There we go. By not picking the paragraph marker, this shading only covers the text that I have selected. If I had selected the paragraph marker, that shading would go all the way over to the margin. All right, now I like that. Click away from it so you can see it. I like that as my heading two. And I'd like to have all the heading twos in my document now update. So what I'm going to do is, is tell Microsoft Word for this document, I want all the heading twos to be updated to match my current selection. Click on that and now you can see that there were extra heading twos here for a while. They've gone away and now all my heading twos have automatically updated throughout the document. I only have three of them. If I updated my heading ones and changed their colors or something and then did that to heading one style, I have updated the style for this document. Anytime I use it, it'll be highlighted. So if I add another one down here, Let's just do an example here real quick. And I'll put Booker Gall in here. And then if I designate this as Heading 2, it takes that new style. And that style includes fonts and includes everything because it's a linked style. It includes the font, the font color, the background, the paragraph spacing, all that stuff. All right, I don't really need that for right now, so I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, here's my conclusion, and it, notice that it has a list of items. The following items will be discussed at the next manager's meeting, and there's three of them. I'm going to select the first one here, and I'm going to change it to a list paragraph style. And it doesn't seem to be listed on this list here, so let's just use list. See what happens. There we go. Okay. It might have indented it, the one that did, I did in my examples indented it, but this is a list. But I would like this list to have a bullet, so I'm going to change it to a bullet. I don't really like the round bullet, so instead I'm going to change, I'm going to customize my bullet. I'm going to define my bullet that I want, it's not on this list, this wouldn't be too bad, this one's not bad, but I'm going to find my own. 
by defining a new bullet. And once you define it, it'll show up on your bullets here on your computer, but it doesn't necessarily follow you around, but it does stay inside this document. And so let's look around a little bit. I could try to find a picture, and there's all kinds of things you can search for and use that. Instead, I'm going to use the symbol. And when you use the symbol, it takes you to the symbols fonts, and you can pick any of these. None of those really meet my needs. Remember in Unit 4, I talked about inserting symbols, at least in the notes, and how you can change this. I know that there's a Wingdings, or actually a Webdings font, Wingdings font, that I want. And it has all kinds of stuff, including a star. It even has this 3D star. I think I'm going to use that. So I'm going to say OK. And that's my new bullet. And now the item has that. And then the next thing I want to do, notice the bullet list was automatically indented. I'm not sure I want that. I'm pretty sure I don't. So I'm going to unindent this so that my star goes back to the, mar to the uh, margin. All right. and that looks pretty good. And I think that's how I want to have my bulleted lists in this document. So I'm going to actually save that now as a new style. In the last one, we changed an existing style. In this case, I'm going to create a new style that uses this new style button in the Styles pane. And by the way, the Styles pane is kind of floating around here. If you double click it, it'll park itself over and move the document over. So that's convenient. I'm going to insert a new style here. When you do that, you get to name it. So I'll call this my Star Bullet Style. It is a paragraph style. It's based on the list. What that means is if the list style changes, this style will change. Well, I don't want them necessarily tied together like that, so I'm going to say that this is based on no style. When you do that, another thing happens. The style for the following paragraph kicks in, and it says that after a star, whenever you enter anything else, the next paragraph is also a star whenever you start a new paragraph. And that's exactly what I want here, so that I can type as many bulleted items on this list as I want and automatically have the star attached to them. Okay. I can change the size of the, of the um, that's the style, I don't want to mess with that, but I could change the style of the, of the bullet, make it a little bit bigger if I want to, but I discovered experimenting with this, that, that doesn't necessarily get saved. The paragraph marker doesn't get saved uh, with the style. So I'm just going to leave this and now that's a star bullet style. These are also from star bullets so I'm going to highlight them and change them to star bullets. And I got an extra one. Looks like whoever created this document put paragraph markers to double space instead of adding extra spaces. So I'm going to remove any blank lines here. Let's just check. Yep, sure enough, there's a paragraph marker, there's a paragraph marker, this is a paragraph. So all these extra paragraph markers I'm going to remove, just delete them. That one will delete. And I think I'm even going to delete this one. And then I'm going to designate, I'm going to modify my star style. I'm going to turn the markers off because they make me crazy. And I'm going to add some space after the paragraph. Now it only did one because I only did the one, but now I'm going to take my star bullet and say modify to match that, and then it automatically updates the others. So when you're creating these styles, what I recommend you do, there are a couple other ways of doing it, but what I recommend you do is you highlight the text that you, or you create the text that you want to save as a style, highlight it, and either save it as a new style or modify one of the existing styles in the document to... Uh, to adopt that style. And now if I click here at the end of this and press enter, notice my new line, because it's a new paragraph that follows this style, new paragraph, it automatically gets the star. I'll undo that. Styles pane can do a couple of other things. I'll warn you in advance, this is how I grade your assignments. I touch on these styles and it tells me what's in there. Notice this has got a default font, 16 size, color, accent 1, it's got spacing before, it's got line breaks, and it's followed by normal. Notice that this style that I'm clicking on here, the heading 1 style, is followed by normal. That's also very handy. Then when you type a title like this and you press enter, you don't get another big blue teal line, you get a normal paragraph. So often you will change that in your heading to change, and that was part of when I was saving it, there was an option there to say the following paragraph, remember with our stars, the following paragraph was another star. Well, you could change that. So when you create a title, 
you press enter, the following paragraph automatically reverts back to normal. That's very, very handy. And another thing I like to do with my styles, besides just touching them to see what's going on, is use the preview mode. They take up a little bit more room, but at least you can see what they're going to look like. And again, right now, what I have done in using the options is displayed all the styles. You might want to consider recommended styles or the ones that are in the current document. That narrows the list down a little bit. And another thing some people like to do is show those styles alphabetized. Right now, they're sorted as, as recommended. You might want to alphabetically sort them so that they're a little easier to find. So there's a couple tips for using styles. All these styles can be changed into templates, and that's what we're going to be talking, or saved within a template, and that's what we'll be talking about in the next recording.